of if you're a New Yorker, you know where pigeons are. They just they're walking around like they're busy, like they have things to do. They're unflappable, like a car could come, they go right back to what they were doing. Um, and they're just everywhere and you can't get rid of them. And they're just posted up chilling. Like that's what this club should be about, I think. My name is Omari, or affectionately known as the Pigeon. I've been a diehard since the club was announced. I'm also a community coach and social worker in bed New York. So the club was announced and I at the same time was trying to build inner city kids' interest in soccer and you know I have some uh, history doing like Chuck E. Cheese and I was Staten Island Yankees mascot for a while and so I knew that a good club, any great club has to have a symbol or a mascot to bring it all together and I knew that kids needed something sort of silly and different to be like, why should I get down with this soccer thing? And so as a joke, I was just like, all right, what does New York City have? Taxi cab, buildings, rats, pigeons. And I liked immediately that it was uh, something that was divided. There were people who were like, see them as majestic, beautiful survivors and a part of any city landscape. And then there are people who hate them. And I knew that there, there was gonna be a lot of just sort of like criticism. There was gonna be a lot of like, oh, these pigeons. and and hey, straight up. And so I thought it was great to have this thing that was kind of torn and divided, but would always be there, would be, always be present and be everywhere. And also that on its own isn't you know, like super amazing. It's strong and beautiful when there's many of them. And I think that's important for our club. It's just like, it's not about the pigeon or one person or one player. It's about what we're trying to do all together. I think we have a real special opportunity with such a new club to build something together and for it to be a combination of all, our, all of our ideals. And so soccer, no matter where you are, is really about community, right? It's about our community with that community together, creating experience, full range of human emotions. And I think that with NYCFC, everyone that got involved saw an opportunity to be there from the beginning and to work with other people to kind of create something that would be around for our kids' kids and be amazing. Um, and so for 90 minutes of a time, I think we're trying to create a culture um, of dreams, like something that we don't necessarily see in the city. Like we're trying to bring the best parts of the city in and also build on to like things that we don't normally see. And I think that soccer is a beautiful game because it's a simple game and has simple rules. And I think we try to bring that into stands. And our simple rule is everyone has a place. Um, everyone has a voice. Um, and my interests are important, but they're just as important as your interests. And so I'm looking out for you. And I think the first season the, really stands out to me the most, where there were just no rules, there was no precedent. So we all had to kind of make it up as we went. And it was crazy, and it was chaotic, and it was messy. But we figured it out. Um, and we had these kind of unspoken rules. We had very explicit rules, um, little things to make sure that women felt safe, to make sure that kids felt safe. Um, and LGBTQ, everyone, immigrants. We were doing little things to make sure everyone had a place. Was it perfect? Is it perfect? No, but every time we come here, like we just try to make sure, especially the bleachers, is our home. You know, like I try to compare it to the train. What I like about the train is that on one train car, you could have a Wall Street broker, you could have uh, someone who works security at night, you could have a chef, you could have a teacher, you could have someone break dancing, all in one car, and it's the great equalizer because we're all trying to get somewhere and experience something together. It doesn't matter who we are when we're, because we're all in together. And that's what the bleachers are like. It's an absolute mess, but you never know who you're standing next to singing. And when that goal happens, when we have that ecstasy, oh, we're just one gel of beauty, right? But yeah, no, it's, it's nuts. It's a lot of noise. It's like, oh, who's this guy? What's happening? What? Oh, we're pulling this over our heads. Oh no, there's smoke. Now we're singing this song. Oh, beer splash. Ah, confetti. It's all of that. Because, and that's what we want it to be. We want it to have that electric pulsing kind of gritty energy that is New York City. Um, and we want that to be like the experience that you have with the club. There's parts of other parts of the, the stadium you can get a different experience, just like there's other parts of New York City. But I think about like the train, you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 uh, it's not ironic that we're called a third rail. It's like that subway experience. Certain stations have different feels, certain games have different feels, but we're all trying to get someplace together. And part of that, getting to someplace together, is accepting and including everyone on that ride.